Hi, welcome back to Sotoku Tech. Today I will realize my Arduino Cloud Games project plan to put this Opla IoT kit in this rocket along with its very own Verizon Wi-Fi hotspot. In my previous video, I connected the Opla Arduino IoT kit to the Arduino IoT Cloud, wrote a sketch, and set up a dashboard to monitor the IMU, X, Y, and Z acceleration readings, pressure, temperature, and humidity on the rocket. I dedicated Friday and Saturday to preparing the Mad Cow Super DX3 high-powered rocket to carry the Opla IoT kit and the Wi-Fi hotspot. This included 3D printing these carriers to secure the Opla and the hotspot inside the payload section of the Super DX3. We need to check out each of the rocket's components. Every piece needs to be weighed. And the rocket's center of gravity needs to be one or more calibers ahead of the rocket's center of pressure to fly stably. The completed rocket will weigh approximately 2,400 grams or 3,000 grams, including the motor. Fortunately, James at Rocket Reworks has one of these Aerotech I500T14 DMS motors on hand right when I need it. Thrustcurve.org says this rocket on the Aerotech I500T14 DMS motor will fly to about 1,000 meters. Rocket Review's parachute calculator indicates that my 72-inch parachute will bring this bird back at a safe speed. Open Rocket is a useful tool to dial in the flight profile for the specific weather conditions on that day. Now it's Sunday, 20 February. This is the only Southern Arizona Rocketry Association club launch before the 11 March Arduino Cloud Games deadline. The Rocket Club sets up all the required equipment and provides flyers with a safe environment to launch rockets. The Rocket Club also does all the paperwork and communication with the FAA to permit high-powered rocket flights. I must have a National Association of Rocketry Level 2 certification in order to fly the Super DX3 on this I-500 motor. This is the weather forecast for today. Winds look to be between 4 to 6 miles per hour. In reality, the winds were at 7 miles per hour, gusting up to 15 miles per hour. I have the rocket prepped and my flight card filled out. Let's go launch it. On the pad E3 right now, this is Jeff Blacks. It's called the Arduino Cloud Games. Uh, this is an I-500 straight to single stage recovery. Okay, ranges go, the sky is clear. In five, four, three, two, one, launch. Well, there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! And this is from on board the rocket. That motor actually only burns for one second, providing 600 newtons of thrust. Then there's a 12 second delay for the ejection charge to push the parachute out. And that ejection charge dislodged this piece of masking tape that's in front of the camera lens, so I'm a little disturbed about that. But enjoy the scenery though, it's a really beautiful day. Lovely clouds, nice blue sky, lots of detail in the video. We're just drifting slowly back. Based on the total flight time, I'm pretty convinced we got our money's worth out of that motor. I'm sure we got up to at least 2,500 feet, probably more.
Okay, we're almost ready to land. I think I saw the rocket's shadow on the ground there. And there we go. This is the recovery site here, about, about 400 meters from the launch site. The open rocket estimation was pretty accurate, very helpful. We got everything back. Okay, so here I was using my laptop on the ground with another Wi-Fi hotspot to capture screen recordings of the Arduino IoT dashboard. So I don't know why it wouldn't let me save the screen recordings, but I managed to salvage it by saving one minute of the time of the video. But there were still two segments, about 45 seconds, that I couldn't save. So we're missing some data here. And then I, I don't know if the cell coverage dropped out on the ground or on the rocket. You can see that immediate drop in pressure on the lower right side. And then, you know, I'm trying to line up the rocket video with the screen capture of the IoT dashboard. And it takes over a minute for the data to start flowing after that initial, you see that initial launch and then data stopped coming down. Yeah, that immediate drop in pressure, the big change in the Z axis. Okay, so now here the data is starting to flow back in. You can see the pressure is climbing back up as the rocket comes lower. There was a definite peak in the drop of the pressure on that lower right graph there. And the rest of the X, Y, and Z readings are just basically the rockets shaking around on a parachute coming down. It was interesting. We definitely saw a change in temperature. And we also saw a change in humidity for some reason. I was kind of interested to see that. We'll watch it finish here. And again, like I say, we lost some of that data and some packets dropped. I don't know if it was a problem on the ground or a problem on the rocket. This is a remote site. Everything checked out. We had good cellular coverage and we were getting good data. But it seemed like launching the rocket definitely uh, knocked some of that out. Okay, the rocket's landed. There, you see pressure... Okay, so this is the one hour view of the dashboard and you can see there was something definitely traumatic happened to this rocket. The temperature continued to climb throughout the day. That's the lower uh, left graph there. And then, yeah, you see the big change in pressure on the lower right graph. That middle, the humidity, that's very interesting. I didn't really understand the change in the humidity and of course, you see the X, Y, and Z readings on the top graphs there. So all in all, I would consider this a success. I got the rocket back, the Opla IoT kit and the Wi-Fi hotspot, got some good camera footage. We did manage to capture some data on the IoT dashboard. For whatever reason, we didn't get all of it. I think I would try this again. Let me know what you think down below. Give this video a like. And before you go, watch the rest of my Opla IoT Kit project videos. Please click on subscribe. Thank you very much.